Well, hello everyone. My name's Rob. I'm with uh, SR3 Rescue, one of the hoist operator instructors. Um, and today we're going to talk a little bit about audio recording with our GoPros. Uh, we've been able to post up a lot of videos, Instagram and YouTube and things like that. And a lot of those videos include uh, ICS audio from the cockpit as well as uh, the GoPro footage that we've been able to get. And we get messages all the time asking us how we've done it and uh, what parts we use. So today we're going to go through a bit of a video and uh, we'll show you guys some gear on how we've done that. And uh, if, uh, if anyone has questions, they're welcome to contact us and, and ask some follow up stuff. But hopefully this is pretty comprehensive for everyone. Um, I really like this for training. It's great. You can, uh, you can record the audio. You can go back in the debriefing and talk about what went well, what didn't go well. Uh, you know, settle disputes sometimes about who said what when, which is great. Um, but it, it, it's great for, for training and, uh, yeah, a debriefing after the fact. Um, we never used to have this option back when I started hoisting much. So, uh, yeah, I'm a big fan of getting it out there. I'd love to see more people doing it and sharing, uh, sharing the way that they con the aircraft. It's super important when you're out hoisting. So uh, a lot of people can learn a lot from, uh, from what's being put out there. And a big part of that is the ICS audio. So... Uh, some of the things we're going to talk about today, and I've got some parts here to go over as well, but uh, we'll talk about the helmet and what part that plays and how we're going to connect everything up to it. Um, there's a couple of different ways of, of attaching a, a GoPro to the helmet. Uh, there's a couple of options commercially available that are basically just a standard. I've got an Alpha helmet and uh, most helmets have something similar though, just an NVG plate. Uh, and then you can go ahead and stick a GoPro adapter to that. I don't like these because they have that bend in them. And uh, because they tend to kind of hang down in your line of sight just a little bit as well. So I, uh, I just made my own. It's just a piece of sheet metal. And uh, I just traced it out basically over the top of the commercially available connector for mine. Um, and then stuck a GoPro adapter to that. And it's been going for years and seems to work quite well. If you have concerns about it not sticking properly, you can put a little bit of glue on there as well, which will help. But it's treated me pretty well over the years. Um, once you've got your GoPro uh, mounted to the front of your helmet, which is pretty much the starting point for all the different things, you're going to need uh, a GoPro itself. So at the moment, I have the, the Hero 10. It's great. It works really, really well. Um, high quality video and, and audio, which has been awesome so far. Uh, but any GoPro uh, should work pretty much the same. Where it gets a little bit tricky moving forward is uh, we're going to use, uh, it's called the Media Mod which is just a little accessory you can get made by GoPro that uh, attaches on. And I think this only works for maybe the Hero 8 and above. So that's a couple of generations old now. So most people hopefully uh, can get their hands on an 8 or a 9 at a reasonable price. The more expensive ones or the newer ones are more expensive. But this is, a, this is an important part of some of the systems we're going to talk about here as well. It's called the Media Mod. Um, depending on the system that we go with when we talk about it here, I also use uh, an audio splitter, which is basically uh, an ICS jack. This end technically actually goes into the aircraft, into your position in your aircraft for your ICS system. And then at the other end uh, is this one here, which is just where your helmet or whatever you're normally talking into headset goes into. The difference with this is that it splits off and uh, at this end over here, this is the standard three and a half mil headset uh, headphone jack which we'll talk about how that gets integrated here shortly and that allows you to pull audio out of your ics system and do something with it with this portion here um the next thing that i've only just recently found out about i wish i knew about it sooner but uh on the tiger performance website if your helmet has uh, cp so one of these connectors here on it uh there's an adapter available that basically plugs straight into that cp adapter and then spits out a uh, a three and a half mil female jack that looks something like one of those. And uh, that allows you to get that audio out of your CEP system and, and again, do something productive with it. So I wish I knew about that sooner, but uh, that's that's super helpful as well. Um, as you just saw, I use a, a, a double adapter. So it goes from a single headset to a double. Uh, I use Westone um, CEPs and they have an option for an audio lead uh, that has a three and a half mil jack instead of the standard CEP jack. Where is it? That one there. So uh, that a three and a half mil is just more useful for for audio recording and stuff like that. So I like those because they they interface better with these type of plugs. Uh, what else have we got here? 
There's also just a short little piece of male to male, three and a half mil audio jack, which uh, I'll show you guys shortly how that works as well, but it's a foot ish, yeah, 12 inches, 14 inches long, something like that. 30 centimeters for the metric folk. And then uh, another big part of what we're gonna talk about is, is this uh, wireless Go system. It's by a company called Rode, R-O-D-E. And uh, they have basically a, uh, a sender and a receiver or vice versa. And that allows us to transmit audio wirelessly from the sender to the receiver. So uh, that reduces some cables and stuff like that, which is super helpful as well. So the three different methods that I, this is how I progressed through doing this. Uh, initially, it started off with a very simple system. Uh, you take your GoPro and you mount it to your GoPro adapter right here. So GoPro to the adapter and then straight to the front of the helmet uh, via the, the NVG mount. Once you've got that GoPro mounted, you can hit record and, and start recording your video. And then uh, what I used to do originally was have my splitter just somewhere in the aircraft. So it plugs into a normal ICS jack. My helmet plugs into the, the female portion, just like normal. And I just went and bought uh, an audio recorder, just a little handheld audio recorder, which has a three and a half mil input and, uh, and recorded the audio independently of the GoPro with that initially anyway. Um, the, the good things about that is that it's cheap and it's simple. Um, it, it's definitely the cheapest option. It's definitely the simplest option. You don't have to modify your helmet at all to do that. Uh, it has the least chance of any kind of tech issues, which everyone always has, but uh, there's less connections and this is less moving parts. So there's less chance of something going wrong. Um, and it has the least amount of stuff actually physically connected to your helmet. So it's going to be lighter. It's going to be less snag hazards, all that sort of stuff. So I, I like those things about it. It doesn't require the media mode. It doesn't require uh, the road wireless system, which is great as well. And the other good thing about it is that the next couple of options that I'm going to talk about uh, all basically utilize the same part. So you can always expand this system out later. You're not committed to much if you, if you go down this road first just to try it out. The other good thing about it is it's the most waterproof system. So if you're working in the rain a lot or you're out training in the rain a lot, then uh, this is going to be the most waterproof system, which is super nice as well. Some of the downsides or one of the biggest downsides is that because you're recording the audio and the video independently, uh, you then need to, after you've finished your training flight, take that audio file, take that video file, sync them up and, uh, and actually do a whole bunch of post-production on them to, to get the audio spliced in with the video, which depending on your level of, uh, computer skill can be a bit of a challenge for sure. Um, one trick that I always used to do when you start audio recording, I actually counted and I said three, two, one, go. And then as long as your hand signals are synced up with the video, makes it easier to splice it later. The other thing you can do is if you do something every time you go hoisting, like opening the door or connecting someone up, if you're very consistent about the way you do that, like opening the door now and you open the door, then that's fairly easy to, to sync up the audio and the video at the same time then. But definitely the most time consuming of the three options. Um, after a while of doing that, I got sick of it and decided to get a bit more uh, high tech with it. So that's where this media mode comes into play. So you take your media mode, and you can insert your GoPro into it. And then what that media mode effectively does is gives you uh, a whole bunch of ports. So you can connect things like a, uh, like a three and a half mil audio, you can charge through there and uh, you can do some video out for display purposes in there as well. But the big one is the headphone jack, which is semi waterproof. I won't say it's fully waterproof. It won't go underwater like that, but in rain and stuff like that, I found it to be okay so far, which is great. Uh, because in the previous version, well, as soon as you pull the side of that GoPro off and open that door, it's totally not waterproof and uh, not going to be super good. And you don't want to risk damaging your $500 camera uh, if it gets wet. So you take that GoPro now with a media mod and same as before, mount it right to the front of the helmet, uh, except this time using that Tiger Performance CEP adapter. You take your CEP adapter on the back of your helmet, run that short little three and a half mil audio cord from the back of the helmet to the front of the helmet over the top, like so. And then that audio connector at the front is what's gonna go into the, the media mod. So that's uh, a great solution. What it does is it eliminates, um, eliminates the need for an audio recorder. It eliminates the need for the audio splitter, this whole system here, which is great. 
Uh, it means you don't have to splice the audio on the video after the fact, which for me was huge as well. Uh, it's still relatively waterproof. It's not totally waterproof. It's not as good as option one, but option two, uh, this one definitely retains quite a bit of the waterproofing and it's relatively cheap. The media mod's a couple of hundred bucks and you need a couple of cables. But other than that, you save most of that by not requiring the splitter and the audio uh, recorder, which, which it ends up just a little bit more than option one at the end of the day. But it does require that your helmet has uh, CP already fitted to it. Just in, where are we? Here. If you don't have CP, it means you have to start doing some cutting and some wiring. Uh, I ended up initially before I found that adapter, just splicing into my helmet. Let me see if I can show you everyone here what's going on. But you can see where I actually spliced uh, up in here. I had to actually cut the wires in behind the CP plug and, uh, and do some jerry rigging at home, which is not ideal. Um, you don't really want to do that if you don't have to. So the Tiger Performance Splitter uh, solves a lot of those problems, which is really nice. Uh, a couple of the downsides to this system. It does mean that you're going to have uh, a cable running over the top of your helmet, which is a snag point and it's just bulky and it's just another thing. Uh, you can unplug them if you get caught or rub on the roof or something like that. I'm a tall guy, so I find that my head always hits things and I, I unplug this a couple of times, which is kind of frustrating. Um, it obviously, it requires CEP in your helmet. If you don't have CEP, then uh, this option probably isn't a good one uh, because the cost of getting CEP wired in or you risk having to cut into your cabling on your helmet, it's uh, probably not worth it, I would think. Uh, and it is slightly more expensive than option one. But uh, I, I went with that system for quite a long time. I loved the fact that I didn't have to uh, splice the audio after the fact. It made my life so much easier. Uh, option three, which is where I'm at now, uh, and I find it's probably the most complicated, but also uh, works really, really well, is uh, by adding, like I said earlier, the, the Rode wireless system, so the sender and the receiver here. And the way that works is the media mod, which is this one here, GoPro with media mod. Uh, the media mod actually has what's called uh, cold shoes. So these little uh, adapter points here, and the Rode wireless system has uh, basically like a, a clip to attach it to your clothing or whatever, but it's also what's called a cold shoe mount. So what you can do is take that and they slot in together and now they're attached. So that becomes one unit effectively. So you take the receiver, which is the one with the LCD screen on it. Uh, and then just with a short little audio cable here, you can connect one to the other and the whole package on your head looks something like that. So you're going to have a GoPro, a sender receiver, and some, a short little cable to connect the two together. Now they're going to attach to your GoPro, uh, and then that whole unit is going to attach directly to your helmet. So that's going to be uh, all that sits on your helmet. And I'll actually rig it up here just to show everyone what that looks like. So you take your adapter now that it's in there, you plug that in. Tighten it all up, like so. Attach your either homemade or aftermarket NVG mount to that. The good thing about this system as well is you can attach this to a chest rig. You could attach it to just a GoPro mount on any helmet, really. Any, any kind of bump helmet or anything that has uh, a GoPro mount can take this. And because it's all wireless, you could even mount it inside the cabin. It doesn't actually have to be mounted to your helmet connected to the ICS directly at all. So it's going to look something like that once it's connected to your helmet. So you've got a GoPro, you've got the wireless system, and that's everything. No need for CEP, no need for wires running up and over the top. It's just an all-inclusive package. It is a little bit bulky on the front of the helmet for sure, but uh, I like it because there's just no there's just wires hanging off the helmet and getting in the way, which I really like. Uh, at the other end, you just take your splitter, which we had earlier there and plug the sender, the audio sender here, that plugs into there. And then you just use your helmet like normal. So into the roof of the aircraft or into your SCS port of your aircraft, and then into the other female end here is where I plug my, my ICS curly cord from my helmet, connect that up, and then there's your system. I usually just take the, the sender for the road system and just clip it to itself there. And then my helmet is just free to do whatever it normally does. It doesn't have to be this close together. You could have this whole splitter system here totally 
somewhere else in the aircraft. You know, you can move it to the co-pilot position or down into the back of your big system and you could take that whole kit and just basically move it out of the way. It doesn't have to be physically connected straight to the helmet. The good thing about the system here is that it, uh, it doesn't require the audio recorder. Um, there's no splicing after the fact. It does require the splitter, but there's no excessive cables on your helmet. It's, it's fairly clean, uh, other than the front, obviously, but at least it's all in one package. The big thing is it doesn't require any modifications to the helmet. So I can take this unit off the front, give it to my buddy. He can clip it straight to his helmet and it continues as normal. You don't even have to stop recording. You can take that whole unit, pass it over and, uh, and continue on, which is really nice. You could mount it in the cabin. You could move it to a different guy. You could mount it on wherever you want to basically. And that audio will actually continue to receive uh, for as long as the range of the wireless system goes, which is Bluetooth range, 50 feet or so. Um, it, it, unfortunately, it is the most expensive and it is a little bit bulky on the front of your helmet, but uh, that's where I've settled for now. It's not still totally waterproof either, but uh, the road system, it has little charge ports on the top, which are USB-C. Uh, and I've managed to find just little silicon bungs or plugs for those, which block that up and, and stop the water from getting in. Uh, I've also added like a silicon uh, sleeve cover over the top of it, which helps with a bit of dust and, and water ingress and stuff too, but it's not totally waterproof, which is another consideration if you're going to be out in really bad weather all the time. So there's three different options there. They kind of ramp up in, in price as well, but uh, if you have CEP, uh, most people would get away with option two. You don't need the wireless system, uh, but if you want to be transferring it around multiple crew members or uh, you want to be able to get a little bit away from the aircraft and still record some audio, then the wireless system option three is a really good option as well. Um, if anyone has questions, feel free to send us a message. Uh, we're at SR3 Rescue on Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, all those normal places. Uh, or you can also contact me directly uh, via the social media channels as well or, or through those same uh, locations through SR3. So uh, hopefully that's been helpful. Hopefully that covers off some of the questions that people have about how I have this system set up. And uh, yeah, we look forward to chatting more about it and seeing those videos out there now that we've given away the secrets. So enjoy. Thanks for watching.